Russell Gordon Lewis. And I'm Dave Friedman. And you are watching the Alternative Cinema Podcast. And how you are. <laughs> <laughs> Nudie cutie feet. Nudie cutie. What's up, Daddy? Nudie cutie. (laughs) Nudie cutie. They say Ezra Cobb was a nice enough fella. Kind of quiet, hard working, good neighbor, devoted son. Just about the last person in the world you'd suspect of being deranged. Deranged, the story of Ezra Cobb, grave robber, psychopath, and homicidal maniac. He was trapped in his mother's web of evil, twisted by his own demented fears, so obsessed with death itself that he became deranged. He carved a trail of butchery so brutal that newspapers refused to print its gruesome details. Deranged, a nightmare of insane murder and lingering death. Deranged, rated R, under 17, not admitted without parent. (laughs) Hello, everybody. Welcome to the alternative. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Welcome to the alternative cinema podcast. Welcome to the Alternative Cinema Podcast Hi. for April 2010, and this probably will not be the best podcast ever, but I can tell you that we're off to a good start because at least our microphones are on. Yes. So. Unlike last month. Yes. And, John. Yes, Mike. Do you know that, uh, oh, what's up with your voice? My voice is effed. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm going to be coming in and out. I have, uh, like, laryngitis or something. <laughs> Do you know that this is the one-year anniversary show? What? This is... <laughs> See? Yeah, you can tell. Right? <laughs> what, what, what? This is the one-year anniversary wow. of the Alternative Cinema Podcast. That's awesome. It's awesome and sad at the same time. I mean, yeah. it's awesome that we've put so many shows in the can, but it's sad because... Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> but it's sad because it was just, like... I don't know. Remember, it was just like yesterday when we were like, yeah, yeah this is the Alternative Cinema Podcast, and, you know, joking yeah. around how it's going to be the only one, because, yeah. so. Well, we made it a year. Yes. We, we, uh, we beat your odds. We beat your own odds. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You know, I have to thank Noel Scotch Anderson. Who uh, has... You know what? I have to, I have to just, wait. Okay. okay. Mike. All right. But it's going to make noise and shit, so. Noel right. Scotch Anderson. Yes. Has been writing from the beginning. Right. And I didn't know that Noel Scotch Anderson was, uh, uh, you know, a DJ on a radio station, 102, up in Fargo, North Dakota. Fargo, North Dakota, yes, sir. That's right. I did not know that. I mean, I knew it. He said it in the first letter, but it didn't click until, like, five months in. <laughs> and even then, like, what? And then I didn't know he was, like, uh, an illustrator doing and a, goof roof. And a damn good one, yep. So, if you go to goof root, da, Goofroof.com, you'll see Noel Scotch Anderson's illustrations. If you go to the you scroll down. If you go if you go to alternative cinema podcast.com, you will see the wonderful illustration that uh, Noel did of John and myself. It's and, great. He yeah. really he got everything in there, man. Uncle Farts. Hey Uncle Farts! I've looked everywhere and I can't find my Shrek 2 boogie boy! Well, then it's quite obvious to me that we got ourselves a mystery. Spider-Babe. He put the film photography freak on your uh, lapel. See the mug? Spider-Babe, pink delicates. I love Joe Sarno. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's great. It's great because you look like a college kid in it. <laughs> I look much younger, yes. And I look... You like... look like you. You look like you. He he captured you perfectly. I See, I... see. I... The hand, even the way you hold your hand. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. It's perfect. Well, I see myself as Mike Rosso from the college days. I look in the mirror, and that's what I see. Yeah, well, you're delusional. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. So, everybody out there, we've been doing this for one year, the Alternative Cinema Podcast, and it's it's been fun. Yeah, it's been very informative for me. Oh, really? Why is that? I learned a lot. You know, I've started to get into this stuff more than I was before when we started. You know, I'm always on the peripheral with this kind of stuff. But, I mean, you're a real champion for these types of films, so you can't help but get into them. Champ with cheese. (laughs) Champ with cheese. 
So is that, uh, is that from Pulp Fiction? No, that's uh, if you go to Checkers. Oh right, right, right. Uh, over on Route 22 in Union, is it Checkers? Uh, uh, belly burners. Yeah, belly burners. Get a champ, Oof. champ with cheese. Champ with cheese. Extra. They ask them when when you order that, you have to ask for extra toilet paper in the bag. <laughs> So I guess you can call this episode, we're going to call it either the Amazing Chiller Show, the Chiller mm. Retrospect Show, the Chiller Theater Special Edition. That's a good ah, one. Ah, good one. What's up, Daddy? We're going, to call, we're going to call it the Chiller Theater Special Edition because uh, John and I, uh, way back in the day, it seems like yesterday, way but back to in about the 1993. Wow. That's, that's what, 18 years ago? That's long fucking 17 time ago. years ago. Yeah. John and I... So long ago, you can't even figure out how long it is. ...would uh, and, take our video gear, and we were producing a cable TV show called Meadowlands Showcase Presents. And you are watching Meadowlands Showcase. And how you are. We went down to Kevin Clement's Chiller Theater, and we would, you know, just do a show, a 30-minute show. Just talk to people. Talk to people, talk to some of the celebrities. I think the biggest celebrity the first time we went there was uh, Linnea Quigley. Yes. And Debbie Rashawn. I know Kevin Clement. He runs Chiller Theater. I know him since I was driving a bicycle. <laughs> he grew up in your neighborhood? He had a record store on Milburn Avenue in Lyndhurst, New Jersey. Really? Called, called Vinyl Frontiers. No oh, shit. And it was a small indie record store where I bought, we, we were just talking about this before the show, I bought the David Bowie Images LP with the cartoon cover. Yeah, it's a crazy one. Yeah. With I, Mr. Gravedigger, is that what it is? Yeah, it's all on there. All the Durham, the Durham sessions. Those are like, uh, how, how would you explain that? Music? Whimsical. Whimsical? Like, like, uh, like uh, Uncle like, Arthur. Like fairy tale ish. Yeah. Very yeah. fucked up. Uncle Arthur, uh, Laughing Gnome. Yeah, Laughing Gnome. Yeah. Okay. That's the most popular one. There that is Mr. A Happy Land. They're, they're like a musical, I don't know. Story books. I, I would say it's a cross between Anthony Newley and Sid Barrett. It's pretty good. The themes are not as dark as Sid. Right. They're more fairy taleish yeah. or, you know, childish, I guess. I watched recently. Don't make fun of me. It's a, it's 1968 film starring Anthony Newley called Sweet November, which they remade with Keanu Reeves. Is that right? Yes. And I've never seen someone, you know, the expression chew up the scenery. Like Anthony Newley. Oh my God. Yeah. He was a real ham. Ham bone. It's yeah. funny to see it now. Is he's, it? You know, he's just bigger than life, and he's always, like, doing, like, a pratfall or looks silly. Like Danny Kay. Danny yes. Kay was always bigger than life. The 1968, you know, it was kind of, like, on the cusp of cinema. He was still kind of a throwback to the Danny Kay kind of performance. Right, like vaudeville or... And meanwhile, you had films like, you know, Midnight Cowboy being made. Easy Rider. Which is a whole... Coming up. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the... It's like the night and day, man. Yeah. Well, actually, night and day of cinema. Where are you going, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Mike left. Uh, all right, good. Now I can talk about what I want to talk about. I'm getting a drink. No, he's going to. Fr- I thought you said there were no drinks in there. <laughs> you dick. Guy opens up my seltzer and he's got Coke and. Film. Oh, my God. There's so much crap in there. I got to drink your uh, secondhand soda. <laughs> so. This is the big chiller extravaganza, but before we talk about that, I want to talk about a few things. Do you have any, anything to talk about before we... Uh... I did, but I forget. So Nothing? What do you want to talk about? Spring. You want to talk about the spring time? Oh, talk about how great it is. How fucking sick I am of being sick. Let me ask you one question. Yeah? Do you have any ants yet in your house? No, let's not talk about okay. that. Okay. What do you think? No. Wish them? Yeah. Probably. Like the film Death Dream, where the woman's sitting in a rocking chair, going rock, rocking back and forth, that she wants her boy back, <laughs> come back from the war, and he comes back dead. Yeah. A little bit alive. Dead. Have you seen that? No. Oh. It sounds like a uh, <gasps> Tales from the Crypt Fucking episode. Horrible. Oh, speaking of Death Dream and the films of the like, uh, Stephen Romano's Shock Festival came out in February. It's getting rave reviews. You know, if you like the all. God damn it. Yeah, I've been watching it. Little by little, oh, it's great. It's good, isn't it? It's great. If you're into this kind of stuff. Even if you're not, because like I said, I'm kind of on the periphery with this shit. Like, but I'm like, okay, I'm going to watch two of these, and then I'm going to do what I got to do. And I, all right, just one more. All right, just the next one, and then I'm going to go back to do what I got to do. I end up watching like six or seven of these trailers in a row. It's for people who like, you know, retro, crazy movies, you know, the uh, exploitation movies of the 60s and 70s. Did you see Great White? It's a knockoff of Jaws. No, I haven't, not yet. 
I look forward to see. Now I'm going to have to go home and watch it. Some kooks made a film called Great kooks. White. It was like a complete knockoff. They got their Robert Shaw. They got their... Uh, Who like is a, for Robert Shaw? It's a star film. Anthony Newley. <laughs> John Link. John Link as the shark. <laughs> okay. An army of deadly predators searching, destroying anything in their path. He's over at Colby's. He's found another 20 or 30 hills just like the one we burned. Why did they come? What do they want? Spiders in this area have organized themselves into an aggressive army. William Shatner, Tiffany Bowling, your nightmares will never be the same. Kingdom of the Spiders, rated PG, parental guidance suggested. Before we get underway, I do want to talk briefly, and you will admit that lately I've been talking very briefly about... My film photography podcast. Yes. Well, you already got 1,600 listeners. What are you... Do you remember how I used to talk like for a half an hour about film photography? Yeah. <laughs> I love that story. So Dwayne and I went to uh, Soho, New York City this Monday, where a company called The Impossible Project, which is a foreign company, yeah. announced that they are going to start manufacturing Polaroid film for Polaroid SX70 and one-step cameras. Now, how many people do you think are excited about well, that? Well, first news? I need to tell the, our audience, our listeners, that cause I'm sure a lot of people just don't know it's discontinued. Like, because no one, I mean... Because nobody uses it. Who uses it? I mean, as Dwayne says, he uses it for proofing, you know, lighting and shit. Uh, well, on shoots, here's who but... uses Polaroid. Uh, about three years ago, you and Kevin Neblong took me to Izumi for my birthday. That's right. And for Banzai. Banzai! Banzai! They took a Polaroid. Oh, did they? They did. There oh. was a guy behind me with glasses that had lights on it. And they yeah. held my arms up. Crazy guy. And a Banzai! And they sing, happy birthday <laughs> to you. And they put the Polaroid in a little card. And they gave it to me. Wow. I'm sure you guys paid dearly for it. Yes, we did. But that's okay. It was worth it. If you, and this is according to Dwayne Polk, you, not me, if you go, <laughs> yeah, I, I should go, if you go to a strip joint yeah. or you go to some like stripper thing, strippers yeah. take pictures yeah. of themselves and they give it to you. Yeah, for like 20 bucks. For 20 bucks. I've heard. Yes. I've never actually gotten one. But yeah, it's a big source of income for them. And according to Dwayne... You may have said it on this very podcast. When Gloria and Gilbert went into CVS to buy Polaroid film, and they're like, oh, we don't carry it anymore. She just said, okay, and that was it. People just put their camera on the shelf. Don't even think about it. Yeah. Don't even think about going online to get the film. They're right. just out so, of sight, out of mind. Yeah. It's really that simple. They're like, oh, they don't sell it at CVS. Then forget it. There was a Russian woman in Walmart yesterday. I went there for shits and giggles to well, see. Seth, right. <laughs> She was Russian. Michael. Yeah, I was like, do you have any Michael. Polaroid film? And she said... Polaroid, are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> she said, not for a year and a half in her accent. Uh, not for a year and a half. That's what she said. Yeah. But a little more strong. Not for a year and a half, stupid American. <laughs> <laughs> now go... So the, the people from the Impossible Project bought a Polaroid factory in uh, the Netherlands. Yeah. Is that where they made Polaroid? Well, there were factories all over. Oh, yeah. And they hired 15 of the employee of all the employees that got fired. How many? Hundreds. Probably hundreds. And they bought they bought all the hardware and the components. Yeah. And but they didn't they don't have the formula. Now, why wouldn't they have the formula? Well, they say, I don't know how true this is. This seems like something I'd make up. They said that the formula one of the key chemical f- Formula, one of the key chemical elements. elements was destroyed in Katrina. What? That's what, what they said. What does that mean? One of the key what chemical does that mean? elements that... was destroyed in Katrina. Apparently there was like a million, you know, barrels of some kind of chemical in Katrina got washed and away. And that's it. It's a finite number of... It sounds kind of made up. It sounds totally made up. I'm not saying they make things up. My dog ate it. So, uh, <laughs> there's a guy, a uh, entrepreneur. His name is Florian Caps. He's the founder. Florian? Yes, Florian. That's his first name. Yes. And okay. he is the mastermind entrepreneur, the idea that they would start manufacturing... Polaroid film. You have to admit, it's pretty crazy. It is crazy. It's nuts. But what does he? What does he hope to accomplish by bringing this 
obsolete form of photography. Back. He's uh, obsessed with Polaroid and feels that, uh, oh, they feel, I was there. Oh, I told you that. Yes. They feel that there, there are over, according to them, there are over 2 million Polaroid cameras still circulating. Laying around. Right. Collecting dust. So they want to make a film for it. It's for artists. This is not for the strippers. It's over. So, so now do you think that uh, half the people that own these cameras are not going to give a shit? And the other half are going to be selling them for exorbitant prices on eBay? Well, I can tell you this quickly about Polaroid. The prices have skyrocketed. Yeah. Skyrocketed. A roll of film, a 10-pack of Polaroid film, I called Unique Photo down in Fairfield. Right. New, you know, because they bought up all the stock. They're charging thirty-two ninety-nine for ten exposures. Jesus, what was it before that? You know? uh, it was fourteen dollars. Wow. Now, I'm not too excited about that because that's kind of gouging. Yeah. You know. Well. eBay film, it's a little bit cheaper, but not much. Cameras range from three bucks all the way up to like fifty bucks. I guess it depends on the model. And if you go to the ImpossibleProject.com, because they now have the factory hmm. and they have the former workers, so they're refurbishing cameras and selling them on their site oh no shit but i will say this briefly film photography podcast.com uh monthly show myself and Dwayne polk and occasionally john fideli yeah if you can't get enough of this show ah! <laughs> and you want to get into some real hardcore talk about shooting photography with film sorry <laughs> right and we have no maybe and i i'll, I'll tell you what's awesome about it it is G-rated. There's no yeah. no f bombs. Yeah. Fuck. It's hard. It's hard for me yeah. to be on that podcast. Plug for guess what? What? For KillerReviews.com. Oh, for Killer Reviews. Oh yeah, Greg Dumont. Greg Dumont, our good friend, uh, Greg Dumont. Yes. I like to drink. I you know I actually drink Cafe Dumont coffee every you day. You do every fucking day. So Greg Dumont, you know I'm not going to ask you who he is. Okay, good because I don't know who he is. <laughs> do you Sorry. know that? Uh, does he does he know who I am? It's yes, not that course. I'm anybody to know. Yes, of course he knows who you are. Why does he know who I am? Because he, he listens to the podcast. He's oh, a webmaster. No. Do you think he actually puts it in his brain like, oh, yeah, John Fideli, Mike. It's probably Mike Rask on the other guy. <sighs> if I said to Greg, who is John Fideli? He's Get him say, on the fucking phone right now. It's a, it's very late. Oh, man. All right. If it was the daytime, like we you used You conference him in tomorrow. Okay. I'll call him up and be like, hey, uh, Greg, I just want to ask you a question. You know who John Fideli is? You know what? I will do that. Okay. You know, he had Richard Christie on his uh, KillerReviews.com. Do you know who Richard is? Kill, listen, KillerReviews.com. KillerReviews.com. You want to go there. And do you, know why, do you know why you want to go there? Why? Because they have the Alternative Cinema Podcast forums. It's a message board. Yeah, so you can go. You can write their comments. KillerReviews.com. There are forums there. It's a message board. <laughs> you can go there and click up top podcasts and hear Greg's podcasts called Killer Review Podcast. It's a wonderful world that we live in. Here. <laughs> that's the, like, that's I was the, trying to that's do the, the, I was trying to do, like, the right, melody. Right, the, the melody. Yeah. So I'll do it. <clears throat> Hi, hello! My name is Ken. And my name is Seth. We're the hosts of the Movies About Girls podcast. We'd like you to listen to our show, because on our 50th episode, we're going to kill a guy. Until then, we're going to watch hardcore pornography and laugh at jerks. <laughs> so if you like tits and murder and gags and bitterness, then listen to the Movies About Girls podcast, the podcast for teenage losers of all ages. MoviesAboutGirls.com Twitch of the Death Nerve. The first motion picture to require face-to-face -face warning. Every ticket holder must pass through the theater's final warning station. We must warn you face-to-face. -face. Warning. Diabolical. Fiendish. Savage. Twitch of the death nerve. You may not walk away from this one. I got an email from a gentleman named Charlie Rutkus, and he just right. wanted, he says, Hey, I want to drop you a line about Trilogy of Blood for you to pass on to your listeners if you don't mind. www.ruckusproductions.com. That's R U C K U S 
Productions.com. Mailbag. And you, and you can <laughs> and you can see the uh, un, uncensored version of his film. And here is a, a short synopsis of his film. I should say here's the the cell, the tag. See, see the, the blood, blood feel, feel the, the terror. terror. Hear the psycho Billy sickness. Experience the sensory triple skull fuck that is. Trilogy of blood. The horror. The horror. John's getting 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 cute rolling in live sound effects, huh? Fucking Fred Norris over here. For all of you that hear our sound effects and think they're actually rolled in live, you can forget about us. Yeah. I sit up late at night in my my fucking underwear at two in the morning. (laughs) I'm fucking laying that shit in. Horrible. Uh, now, Trilogy of Blood had a had a world premiere. I say had because by the time this gets on the it's very very small amount of space to actually go to this, but mm-hmm. so they had their world premiere at the uh, April third and April fourth at the Alamo Draft House Cinema in Winchester, Virginia. So Winchester, Virginia. So if anyone has uh, want to check out this Trilogy of Blood. Sounds pretty uh, go to, all fucking good. <laughs> go to ruckusproductions.com. And thank you, Charlie, for the letter. Hey, Charlie. Trilogy of blood. That's it for the letters. You know what I know about Charlie? My neighbor behind me has a kid named Charlie. All fucking summer long, they have a pool. All I hear is, Charlie! Charlie, get out of the pool! Charlie! Charlie! Trilogy of blood. Trying to enjoy some fucking time in the backyard. I can hear this jerk. <laughs> Charlie! Charlie! <laughs> Trilogy of blood. Do you know that John Link has his own internet radio show? Get out. John Link has his own live internet really? radio show. How do you know this? Why didn't you tell me this? I did tell you this. You don't listen. <clears throat> when did you tell me this? I told you the last podcast. No, bullshit. It's called The, the John, John Link, Link show. show. How come? Do you listen to it? I do listen to it. Is it great or what? I love it. I it it's live, so if like John Link's brother comes in... He does it live in his bedroom? Yeah, he does it live in his house. He's he's of the mind to be able to put that shit together? So his brother will pick up the other extension. And he'll be like... Oh, it's on the phone? Get off the phone, retard! <laughs> I, could, I, I should have pulled that clip. Oh, my God, yes. Uh, you have a little clip there of his intro. Okay, let me see. Where is it? John Link Show. Here, yeah, we, here go. we go. Hello, this is your host, John Link. Actor in independent films... Anarchist, occultist, paranormalist, and researcher. The researcher. Yes, he researches. What's he researching? I don't know. Teeth. (laughs) Teeth. (laughs) So, (laughs) if you Google the John Link show. Oh, wait a minute. The Google. (laughs) (laughs) If you Google the John Link show. Oh, fuck. I got uh, Fred. The Google. I got Fred Norris over here. With his Fred, fucking Fred car. Norris is returning, brother. Right. If you Google the John Link show, you'll see the link. Uh, every the Google. Th- <laughs> every Thursday at uh, 11 p.m. You could uh, Eastern time. You could listen to the really? John Link show. Like, yeah. Where? How do you? How do you listen to it? He has a radio. You Google the John Link show, yeah. and it goes to blogtalkradio.com. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So, uh, if I, I, was, I was thinking of taking an audio device to Chiller Theater this year and doing a quick interview with John, like asking him the pertinent questions, like, yeah. you know, what is it about? Who, you know, who, who's ho- clearly is a host. I mean, he's the host right. of the show, but someone has to be organizing it. Right. I mean, yeah, I don't think he's capable. There are some good stories on the John Link show. Like, do you know he drove for a while? No, I've he never. Dr- ever since I've known him, he hasn't drove. He was driving a van, an old beat-up van, down the highway, and his brother put a box of sheet metal on top of the van, but he didn't know oh, that no. it was on top. Oh my God! So a cop pulled him over. Yeah. You know, issued him. He got, he got so many summons that, and he said he hit so many parked cars that he oh, lost Jesus his license. Christ! Forever. Can you imagine him driving? No. Really can't. Be like letting a dog drive. <laughs> well, like uh, in uh, Mr. Frankenstein, I had a scene where um, where I I was playing the character called the Jester, and I had to arrest myself. John Link, of course, is star, uh, or or I should say, a character actor. No, I should say, a character performer. He's a performer. He's a performer. Yeah. Perfect. And he was in many of the early uh, seduction cinema shows. Tons. That played late night cable. So people in his town, when he walks around collecting garbage and stuff, 
People in this town must be freaked out because they know him as kind of the town oddball. Right. But then they go home and like at night and he's on TV. Yeah. It's got to freak him out, right? It must be pretty mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, wasn't that the guy that was just taking shit out of our garbage can? <laughs> he's on TV. With naked chicks. But we're, I mean, we're joking around, but we work with John many, 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 many times. Yes. And, uh, you know, he's a friend of the studio, and uh, we, we, we don't and mean considering any... Considering all that he's been through, he's a pretty good guy. We don't mean any disrespect. No, we don't. Johnny. We, we love Johnny Link. We, we wish we had more work for him, but, you know. When you gonna use me? I mean, things kind of dried up around here yeah. for that kind of film. We just yeah. weren't producing that kind no. of film. That and he said... Done. And Zach left EI, and then Brett Piper wouldn't use me. That's what he said. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, I just don't think uh, Brett, you know, had had, an, had a he, part for him. He didn't get didn't get the Johnny Link. Uh, Sometimes uh, directors don't just don't have a part for you. No. I mean, they, they just don't have a part for no. you. Oh, do you know? Want to hear about uh, Super Eight Fever? The Super Eight. You want to hear about the Super Eight? Wow, Fever? eat it up. <laughs> you yeah, hear, that means yeah I want to eat it up you want to hear about the Super 8 filmmaking explosion on the east coast of the US yes of course I do because this is like talking about you know taking Polaroids well first, first of, of all who makes Super 8 film anymore they still make it oh my goodness John not only do they make Super 8 film but when we were shooting Super 8 you had two choices Kodachrome or Ektachrome yes that's it now a Super 8 sound, which is now called Pro Super 8, they take 35 millimeter film stock and cut it into 8 millimeter. Into 8 millimeter so you could buy all the beautiful vision stock that's available in 16 wow. and 35, and you could buy it for Super 8. That's pretty cool. That's fucking nuts, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, that's nuts. I would like to see some of that. It really blew my mind to think that you could buy such beautiful film stock cut for Super 8. Yeah. And cut it. Like, who started that? Pro Super 8. It's a company called Pro Super 8. That's pretty cool. They've been around for a long, long time. Here on the East Coast, it's been a sudden surge of Super 8 madness. Like? Not to be confused with 8mm madness. What's the difference between 8mm and Super 8, Mike, for our listeners? Uh, well, Single and double perf. No, well, um, ah, Super 8, 8mm uh, was... Um, and cut it. In 1971, I want to say, I remember because I was a kid, Kodak introduced Super 8, <coughs> and the image was bigger and the sprocket holes were smaller. I see. Sprockets. So you get like maybe 8.5 millimeters. You got like more picture. Yeah. But you realize that these companies just reinvent the format so they could sell more shit. You realize yeah. that, right? It, Absolutely. It, it kind of sucks. What? I mean, Blu-ray, DVD, Blu-ray. Now, I know right. video files will argue about the quality of Blu-ray, and I don't disagree with you. But please, all these formats. Anyhow. It's like with CDs. They keep remastering shit, repackaging it. Well, wouldn't you say that... How many times are you going to buy the same fucking CD or same movie? I've bought Something Dark Side like of the Moon like three times. Yeah, it's ridiculous. No, four times. I had an 8-track, yeah. the LP, yeah. two CDs. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think shooting Super 8 is akin to people shooting Polaroids? In a different kind of way? Yeah, because you really don't hear about it a lot. You, you don't often get to see Super 8, uh, film shot on Super 8. You know, where, where do you see these things? So, the only one I know of was the one that we shot in the J.R. Bookwalter movie. Uh, the J.R. Bookwalter the movie? The Dead Next Door. The Dead Next Door. Yeah. And, and that then, looked pretty damn good for 8mm. Yes, it did. I have to get you a DVD of it. Yes. You'll be sure. astonished. He remastered it. Oh. We shot The Basement. Yeah. In 1989, using the same camera the, that J.R. Bookwalter used for The Dead Next Door. Yes. And uh, me, the younger version of me. Yes, the all, one that you see in the mirror. Yeah, the one I... No, nah, I don't see that. I, you don't see that guy? No, nah, I see like the, the mid-30s. Oh, okay. Mike Rosso. I don't see, I don't see the 24-year-old Mike Rosso. You don't see the happy, optimistic Mike Rosso. Uh, <laughs> the future is bright and clear, Mike Rosso. It's funny when you're that young, you don't think about the future. No. Everything's in the now. That's true. It's crazy. It's a very good observation. So, you know, I was in the now in 1989 making a feature film, my first feature film as a director of photography. Uh, you were kind of jack of all trades. Lighting guy. Yeah. 
you know, actor. Mm-hmm. Kind of like John Link. Actor and independent films, anarchist, occultist, paranormalist, and researcher. Uh, <laughs> Magician. Uh, anarchist. <laughs> anarchist. Magician. Yeah, I was, uh, I directed some stuff for that movie. You directed some second, stuff for second, the second, second, second unit stuff, yeah. With Jeff. Yes. Jeff was DP. That was the big zombie night with the trailer yes. outside. Uh, it was a horrible night. So, <laughs> so this is an eight, a super eight millimeter feature film called The Basement that I shot, and Tim O'Rell wrote and directed it. And I believe Scott Hart wrote one of the episodes. Uh, the one remember it was like, <sighs> this house is haunted. Don't you remember he had the fake teeth in? <laughs> he couldn't talk. And, <laughs> and you can hear me laughing behind the camera. <laughs> As a matter of fact, when I did the telecine, <laughs> the take played, <clears throat> and I was. You can hear yourself. No, no, no! I started laughing at the exact same time I started laughing on the film, <laughs> because this uh, is uh, this is shot on Super 8 sound film, so the, uh, there's a magnetic strip on the film, so right. we, we we recorded the sound directly on the film. <laughs> Thank God, because the script doesn't exist. We've oh ne- God, never been able to. So Tim O'Rourke gave me all the footage for the 1989 horror feature, The Basement, in 1991. How would Scott Hart say that with his teeth in? The Basement. <laughs> in 1991, when Tim O'Rourke said adios amigo yeah. and went to California. He just handed it over to him. Handed you. it over. I was in my Comcast office. Otherwise, it would be sitting somewhere. He just, uh, he's had it. He just, you know. And I called Tim last week. Yeah, yes, he I doing? did. He's doing great. Good, good. He says hello. Oh, well, hey, yeah. Tim. And, uh... I asked him, why did this project get abandoned? Because I always thought it was my fault. Oh, because yeah. the film was dark. Huh. He can't remember. He says, I, I honestly cannot remember just why. not enough. Do you know the space between shooting The Basement in May of 1989 and shooting Ghoul School in January of 1990? June, July, August, September, October. It's only seven months. Can you believe yeah. that? Yeah. It seems crazy, doesn't it? That he'd shoot so a feature ago. Super 8 movie and then seven months later abandon it and then shoot a 16 millimeter film. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like a smart move. Yeah, I guess. Straight enough. I'll tell you what I do remember working with him on The Basement. He used to drink that fucking Jolt Cola. And Circus Peanuts. And Circus Peanuts and take Excedrin like they were Tic Tacs. <laughs> and we were shooting late one night in Anthony's house, in your friend Anthony Scardino's house. And something wasn't going right with the special effects. And he turned to me and he put both his hands on his chest and he said, I can't feel my heart. <laughs> like, no wonder. Your fucking head's ready to explode with all the caffeine and... Sugar you're putting into your body is insane. It was a lot of pressure. It was a lot of pressure for sure. You know, we didn't know what we were getting ourselves into. We were young filmmakers, and we're just like, oh, we're, we're going to shoot one night at Anthony's, not knowing that it was going to take 12 hours instead of the three or four hours we assumed it would take. Well, you remember a year ago when we had Jacob Ennis on. He's the filmmaker that did Stash. Stash. You know, uh... I can really feel for filmmakers who are out there, you know, because they're going through the same nausea, the same experience of trying to make a feature right. film. It's so fucking stressful. Yeah, it is. So stressful. So ask, many... ask anybody who's made a movie so, on a low budget. I will say congratulations to anyone who made a movie, regardless of whether it's good, bad, good, bad, or the ugly. Yeah. It's like if you actually made it and edited it and it's done. You came out the other side a different person. Forget about distribution. If you made that movie, I think you there's a lot you should be proud of because yeah, no it's doubt. an incredible feat. Feet. It's it's like running a fucking marathon, man. Feet. Yeah. Feet. Because there are so many opportunities to just give it up and pack it in and just say this is too fucking hard. I can't fit. Feet. And burp. So I've been you know feet. Been there, done that. Right. And it doesn't even matter what format you're shooting on. No difference. All the same. Offer some helpful advice. Yes. I mean, if you're shooting on the new Super Duper Deluxe digital format or you're shooting on Super 8, you still have to light it. Yep. You, you still have to have good audio. Format doesn't make it any easier. As a matter of fact, the, the Super 8 film, The Basement, is being edited by Joe Colbeck. Joe Colbeck. Where's Scooper's Boogie Board? Uh, Uncle Fox. Uncle Fox. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah! I'm... Uncle Fats! Great. There you go. 
So, you know, Joe, the Uncle Farts is a, you know, that's a video. That's, that's has a cartoon. Right. right yeah. So just the other day, he like hit himself. He gave himself one of those V8 things. He's like, yeah. oh my God, it'd be so easy if I did an audio only. He never thought to do it just audio. <laughs> I was like, oh yes, please, please do yeah, audio. Yeah, we could do uh, every month. Every month, have an episode of Uncle Farts. Uncle Farts. So young Joe Kolbeck is editing the basement and he is doing the sound design from scratch. God bless. So on the upcoming, by the way, The Basement, 1989, will be released on the Camp Motion Pictures box set of 80s DIY movies. So it's going to be The Basement. It's going to be Captive, Captives, the unreleased uh, Gary Cohen film, Video Violence 1, Video Violence 2, and I think Cannibal Camp Out. Cannibal Camp Out. Cannibal Camp Out. Sounds like a uh, stellar set. He's doing the sound mix from scratch. So on one track of the DVD... We'll so he's be like doing the... What do they call that? Foley. Everything. Wow. On one track on the DVD will be the original track off of the film with the original actors. That's cool. Yeah. And on the second track will be a complete new Foley, new mix, music. Filmmaker Chris La Martina is doing the music. And... La Martina. I sat and watched a clip of it. La Martina. And the, the, the sound work is so good... It changes the perspective yeah. of the movie. Right. Like it actually bring it fills it out, and it makes the fact that some scenes are dark or some scenes are not shot very well. It makes it all forgiving. Because now, were you were you able to tweak those images and and yes. with the new technology? As I call it, I asked the te- the the colorist at the telecity session to blow light through it. Yeah, it's like blast works. some light through there. So now, how how much better is the image? Fifty percent better? Twenty percent better? Well, I would say in 1989 it was unusable. Really? Just written off as like it's too dark. Yeah. Professor Marola. <laughs> oh, Michael, it's too dark. Too too dark, Michael. It's too dark. So, the scene in the uh, house, the slaughterhouse scene, yeah, is very dark. But you know what? Watching it, it's so dark that it's good. Oh, really? Because you know that's so, atmosphere. Well, you know, the effects in the film were all, you know, puppets and animatration. Anim- animatrations. <laughs> it hides that shit. No CGI. It's no, all you know, it's prosthetics all, yeah. and bladders. Right. It's all live shit. So the fact that some of it is darkly lit really, and I'm not saying this to sell it. I'm really not. Right. It really helps. Yeah. And with the sound mix, it makes your mind do. Because it's like. Yeah. It's, it, it fills in the whole picture. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool. It is. Hey, do you have a clip of. This is a scene where a character, Mr. Edelman, a film director. Yes. He, it's a it's a movie within a movie. It's about a guy who's directing a movie and he disrespects zombies. And at night, real zombies come out of the graveyard and kill everybody. Right. So in this in this scene, Mr. Edelman, the director, uh, a a lowly PA played by J.R. Bookwalter, comes up to him and explains to him, "You don't know what you're doing. You don't know anything about horror." All right. That we shot that in that big graveyard. Oh yes. We had like a backhoe digging graves. Do you remember that? Yeah, it was fucking pouring, and in the morning, all the all the graves are filled with water. <laughs> <laughs> we had a trailer. We slept in that trailer. It was so fucking cold. We had extension man. cords like sp- sp- sprawled across that. We that... could have killed everybody. <laughs> <laughs> We're so lucky nobody got uh, shot. Listen about filmmaking, all you young people. Shooting five thousand watt lights. <laughs> Don't put electric cords in water. <laughs> we buried that guy. I, well, I'm surprised uh, he, no one got hurt. He was so pissed, that dude. I mean, we had so, so much juice yeah. running through. We had like 10Ks. Where were we? Oh, my God. Oh, we had the generator, generator truck. truck. Casey Kehoe. Casey Kehoe. Crack dog. Crack dog. Yeah. We had so much juice running through lights, we could have probably murdered the whole, yeah. the whole lot. Just blew everybody's head off like scanners. But, <laughs> knock on wood, for some reason. Yeah. I think there were some people there who knew what they were doing. That were putting the connections up oh, on like, like Apple like boxes Healy. and shit. Yeah, Tim Healy yeah. and the other dude, whatever his name is, Brian. Is he working there? No, that was Psycho Sisters. Oh, okay. Tim Healy, fresh off Sergeant Kabuki Man. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What a real step down. <laughs> so this is a, a, a sound bite from the upcoming basement. This is the actual real sound off the film, which you'll hear on the secondary track. We've, we've re-recorded this. Oh, oh wait yeah! A <laughs> I'm Uncle Fred! <laughs> so funny. That's not it. Where do you get that music? <laughs> I had it all queued up. If 
if I could just have a minute of your time. You got one minute, kid. Well, you see, Mr. Edelman, it's about the movie. Well, actually, it's about your directing. Come on, you're running out of time, kid. Well, you see, a lot of us on the crew are, are big horror fans. Uh, some of us even worked on the, the last two George Romero dead films. Could you get to the point, kid? Well, you see, I... We don't think you're doing this right. It, you're just giving horror a bad name. Especially zombie movies. I mean, these zombies, they just look like assholes. Are you finished, kid? Sure. Good. Who the fuck do you think you are? Okay, well, fuck you, you and fuck George Romero. And oh. anybody else who thinks they know everything about horror. I know what the kid's like. This is my movie. I know that. I this just... is my vision. And I'm going to make a name for myself. And I'm going to make money on this movie. I don't give two shits what you, Fangoria oh, freaks, care yeah, about horror yeah. films. Hey, you know, you're lucky I'm in a good mood. Otherwise, I'd fire your ass right now. In fact, why don't you get the fuck right out of my face before I really lose my temper? The late David Weber. Mm, he was a good guy. He was a good guy. A great guy. And uh, J.R. Bookwalter. Hmm? who I'm still in touch with, that the character remembers like, this is my movie, my yeah. vision. The, the zombies. End, the zombies rip his eyes out. <laughs> He's like, my vision! Was, my vision! That's just one of the bits of brilliance in that movie. Do you know that there's a scene where your character, yeah. the demon attacks I, you? I forget it. And he takes your head and starts smashing your head into the wall. Yeah. And then it cuts to a prosthetic head. Where he puts <laughs> demon thumbs in your eyeballs. Oh, is that right? And then, no, no, he puts this two fingers in your eyeballs, one Ow. from each hand, pulls your face apart really? so that the skin reveals a skull, and then he puts his hand in the skull and pulls out your brain. Oh, my. You don't remember that? No. I didn't remember it either until I saw it. I was like, oh, my God. Wow. That's it, pretty hardcore. The effects are hardcore. They look good? Or? Scott Hart, I mean. Went balls out. Balls out! Wow, it's a real, sh it's a, it's a real shame he didn't work on Ghoul School. Yeah, you know he was a good guy. Yeah. So yeah. I'm recently in touch with him as well. Oh no, kidding! Yeah, you will admit I'm the sentimental of you and I. You right? really are. You 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 look back. I look back. You look back with kindness. Talk about. I look back in anger. I mean, I <laughs> look back in anger. That's right. Yeah, I always talk about <laughs> contacting Bashir. John and I would shoot weddings with a guy named Bashir. I'm like, Mike, oh. would, Mike would always fuck him over. <laughs> I couldn't fuck him over. He never turned on the wireless microphone. Oh, it wasn't working. Well, <laughs> we're supposed to. John and I used to shoot weddings back in the early '90s, and you know, we were supposed to put a wireless mic on the groom so you could kind of hear the vows. So you could hear the vows. You were only supposed to plug it in at that one point. But what you had to do is stop the camera, plug in the audio, start the camera again. Right. And, and switch the audio from the external mic to the internal uh, mic. So it was a pain in the ass. So I told a few white lies. He'd be like, ah, I turned it on, it didn't work. And, and Bashir would always be like, Mike said it didn't work. He's full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> he was on to you. He was, I, I apologize, Bashir. He knows. Yeah. He knows. I mean, He's for Christ's sake, you think I was like on my deathbed. Like, I want to find Bashir. I'm like, Bashir, I want to tell you. So sorry, man. I'm sorry. The, the mic's... The mics were they perfect. worked fine. They were perfect. He lent us. He knew they were the mics to use on the basement. How did he? Yeah, remember the there was like a big console system with two antennas. I don't remember. It was a wireless anything. mic. The only thing I remember is shivering my ass off one night in that graveyard on the top of that recreational vehicle, then having to work the next day in my my dirty clothes. <laughs> so we have in on the East Coast. We have Rhode Island. Rhode Island. We have. Richard Griffin, mm -hmm. you know Richard. Sure. He is getting ready to shoot a Super 8 feature film called Disco Exorcist. Great. Yeah. Great title. And uh, right now he's testing film stocks. He's, like, looking at cameras. Oh, he should send some of the tests. I'd love to see him. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I'll send you the links. Hello. Yeah, definitely. I, I know you're going to, like, poo-poo it, but you really should be on the Facebook I, I can't. You'd, you'd enjoy it. You really would. You'd enjoy it. Too many fucking people that I don't want to deal with. Oh, like uh, high school people. <laughs> hey, John, I'm going to kick your ass. It's Again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kick your ass on the internet this time. Apparently cyberbullying is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? I mean, when, when John and I were in school, I mean, you know, there, I was always middle of the road. I never got beat down, but I kind of just did my own thing. Yeah. 
But there are kids that got beat down by bullies. I mean, bullies have always yeah. been a problem. Isn't it amazing that now it's cyber bullying? Yeah, it's easier to be a cyber bully. You can like just like yeah, you from be... across the room in this in the classroom, like yeah. text. I'm gonna kick your ass if at three o'clock. It's ridiculous. So now they don't have to come up to your face. The bullies be like, I'm gonna see you after yeah. school. They just text it to you. Yeah. And then nice. taunt you all day. Did you see this in the news? Some guy beat the shit out of this girl. No. I mean, he stomped her with like metal toed. Oh, my God. They had to take the top of her fucking skull off so that her brain would have a chance to stop swelling. Oh, my God. They beat her so badly. They had to take her fucking head off. I'm going to see you after school. The the cap of her head. High school? Yes. Uh, I don't don't know the story exactly, but this kid got so pissed off. This is real horrors. I don't want to discuss real horrors. Yeah, see, that's how how the real world works. Speaking about the horror... You know about uh, the Chainsaw Kiss gang. Victor Bonacore. <laughs> Stoops. Testing you can one, edit too. this, right? Yeah. So, so say, um, speaking about the horror. Speaking about the horror. The horror. The horror. Victor, Victor Bonacore. Bonacore. You know about the Chainsaw Kiss gang? Yes. That's uh, Ruby LaRocca. Mm. Victor Bonacore. Oh, wait. Say, uh, wait Joey Smack. <laughs> say uh, Luby LaRocca again. Luby LaRocca. Hot tail. <laughs> <laughs> Ruby LaRocca was in our very studios uh, last week shooting a box cover for uh, Faces of Schlock, <laughs> mm-hmm. which is a film, uh, a, a anthology of films by Henrik Kudo. Hannah Montana, I want to slam ya. Right. Chris LaMartina. <laughs> I'm going to forget everybody. Oh. Uh, Andrew Shearer. Mm-hmm. And... Pinocchio. And... <laughs> Oh, uh, Justin Channel. Okay, good, good for you. Bunch good of friend. young filmmakers. Good. And the, the Ruby LaRocca looked fine. I bet she did. Yes. I bet she did. Yes. I'll tell her you ask asking for her. Mm-hmm. Yes, John has yeah. crush on Ruby LaRocca. Always did. Yes. But I'm, now I'm like a dirty old man. Uh, like, yeah, Lou, Ruby, I always had a thing. For she <laughs> lives in your town, dude. I am. You should just go over there and hang out. Oh, yeah, I should. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even want... I'm here. What are you guys doing? I think they'll be thrilled to see you. They live in, I call the horror house. The horror house? It's a horror looking well, house? I, no, no, no. I call it the horror house. That's an expression. For oh, example, because they shoot horror? No. When Mark Lucy, he's a roommate when I was in college, before I, uh, I moved in with him on Charles Street in Lodi, yeah. he lived in the horror house, which was a house where like a bunch of people le- lived. Yeah. And there's always like stuff going on. Uh-huh. Like, you know, doors opening, like, one guy leaving, one guy's coming yeah. in. One guy comes in with a keg, the other guy leaves. You know what I'm saying? It's always... Why is that horror? Because it's the horror house. It's a horror house. There's always something going on. Okay. It's the horror house. Nothing to do with horror. I thought it'd be like you open a door, somebody's getting scalped. (laughs) Maybe. You open another door, there's a witch making a pot with throwing toad fingers in. If you go over the horror house, uh, you got Ruby LaRocca, Joey Smack, and Victor Bonacore. Victor Bonacore! And at any given time, there are people just hanging out. I bet you if you walked over to the horror house... I bet you'd be thrilled to see you and be like, hey, have a beer, crack open a beer. Oh, I'm sure they would. Yeah, yeah they're a lot of fun. People. Victor's cool. And yeah. Joey's cool. So they're doing Blood Wings, a satanic fantasy. Super oh, 8. Super 8. And 16. Great. And they're oh, at, and 16. Interesting. Yeah. And they had their uh, fundraiser at the Clash Bar. Oh, right. That's yeah. right. Go to AlternativeCinema.com. Oh, jeez. There you go. Oh, Johnny Link. Actor and independent films, anarchist, occultist, paranormalist, and researcher. Oh, we are on the uh, Alternative Cinema News. If you look around... Uh, <laughs> oh, look at that picture down below. <laughs> Holy shit, Johnny Link with that hat on. There's a trailer online. Can you play the trailer for Blood Wings? I'm playing it right now. I can't wait. Loading. Good evening. Chainsaw uh... Kiss presents to you a brand new tale of freakish delight. See a satanic cult like you've never seen before. See the long hair. See the fairy tales. See the wolf boy. <laughs> Crazy. See the sexy satanic slut. And dare to see the devil himself. See cult film stars Ruby LaRocca. Johnny Link and Linnea Quigley. Hear music by Squeamer Club and Mike Hunchback. From director Dick Devonico comes a twisted tale straight from the fiery love flames of hell. Bloodly. A 
Chainsaw Satan Man. Coming soon, Chainsaw Kid. Yeah. And his girlfriend, what's her name, Aaron? Aaron, yeah. Aaron Russ. Aaron Russ. That's some pretty crazy shit, huh? Oh, man, looks great. So they screened a bunch of trailers, and then three bands played. Oh, nice. Yeah, to raise money to help them complete the film. Uh, this, uh, these shots are from that night. Yeah. Pig Destroyer. If you go to the bottom. Oh, Ruby plays guitar? Yeah, Ruby played like a, a song. Oh, shit. Like a novelty tune. Really? Yes. But like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star? Something like that. I forget what it was about. It looks like a pretty cool place. It's called the Clash Bar. It's on uh, Main in, uh, off right off of Main in Clifton. Oh, there were a lot of people showed yeah, up? Yeah, a lot of people showed up. Great. Yeah. Did they say how much money they made? I didn't ask. Were they able to finish the project? They're doing it now. Great. Good for them. Yeah. I felt that uh, as filmmakers trying to raise money for a movie, I thought they kind of did it the right way. It's sort of like the equivalent of having a bake sale. True. You get something. Like yeah. You go in there, you pay eight bucks cover, you get three bands, you get a bunch of trailers, you get like Ruby singing, you get John Link hosting. I mean, I mean, you have to pay for your own booze, but you know, if you're that, you know, that's the way to, you know, put on a show. Eight bucks is not a lot of money. Eight bucks is not a lot of money for a good time. For a good time. Yeah, go anywhere and try and see three bands for eight bucks. Good luck. Exactly. So. Not good for them. Exactly. Very, very entrepreneurial of them. I thought it was very cool, yeah. Good. I was going to say something. What was I going to say? Oh, I'm like, hmm, 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 hmm. I don't know. Oh, hmm. Huh. Huh. Hmm. 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 Oh, no. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What? So what we came here to discuss this month is the fabulous Chiller Theater. Ah, oh, let's get on to the main event. Yeah, the Chiller Theater Toy Model and Film Expo that's uh, been going on, I think, since 1990. Since we were young filmmakers. And they started in Rutherford at the uh, at the Williams Center Theater. Uh, we didn't go there. Dickinson or something? No, we didn't go. We didn't attend oh, the very first. Those. Okay. Very very small venue. And then they moved to the Fairleigh Dickinson. Uh, forget something like a gym hall or something. Yeah, in uh, Hackensack. Right, that was and the first one we went to. Yeah, that's one where Linnea Quigley, Brink Stevens, and Michelle Bauer were. Yeah, well, and Debbie Rashad. And Debbie Rashad. Then it was like it was like the scream, cre- scream, stream, scream, scream, cream queen. cheese reunion. Really mm. Scream cheese. See, Debbie Rashad, she's a different generation. She's yeah. the next. She was just starting that. Oh, was she? Yeah. Oh. But, Linnea Quigley, Michelle Bauer, Brink Stevens were Oh, you the, like Michelle Bauer. That's oh right. Oh, my God. I remember, yeah. The Scream Queens from the ni- early 1980s, uh, Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers. Right. And, uh, you know, um, Super Slime Ballorama. Yeah. <laughs> you know, movies of that ilk. Right, of the living. And this was the reunion. And it was only like four years after those films, five years after those films were made. Isn't that right. crazy? Yeah. Nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Nudie cutie feet. Nudie cutie. What's up, Daddy? Nudie cutie. <laughs> Nudie cutie. And researcher. Well, I'm going to click it. I'm going to see who's there. So, oh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Click it. All right. Let's see. Because last year I was pretty amazed at some of the talent they were able to yes. get. So let's see. Try to contain your anger and negative. Well, comments. Alice Cooper. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's awesome. Guests, click here. Uh, oh, what? What? Rita Moreno. <laughs> Where's what? She, what was she in? West Side Story, Oz. Okay. The Electric Company. All right, okay, so she's not a... Sally Kellerman. Okay, who was she in? I thought this was supposed to be chiller theater, not fucking like all the Hollywood stars who have nothing better to do on a weekend theater. We'll keep going. I'm sure we'll get some horrors. Richard Chamberlain. Uh, He was in like what? Uh... Dr. Kildare. The Thornbirds was his Oh, picture. yeah. He chews up some scenery, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, Carolyn Monroe. All right. Oh. Yes, sir. Ben Davidson. Anyone? Ben. Who's, Who, who's Ben Davidson? No freak not going to be there again. That's not nice. Ah, come on. Uh, Kristen Bauer. Any relation? To Michelle Bauer? I don't think so. Uh, Brett Wagner. Who's that? The Crazies. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Karen Valentine. Oh, room two twenty two. She used to be cute. Oh my goodness. Is the oh. picture is the picture of her now or then? Then. 
Oh, Van. Robert Carradine from Revenge of the World yes. Ner- Nerds. Yes. Oh, my God, this guy. Who, which guy? Curtis Armstrong. Who is he from? From Revenge of the Nerds. He was Booger. Get he out. was also in Risky Business. Yes, he was. He was Tom Cruise's friend. This is a now picture. He looks pretty good. Those oh, are... I would love to meet that guy. I'm you a would. big fan of his. You, you like, I love that guy. You would, you would go to Chiller, just, just make a beeline right to his. I'd be like, I'm here to see you. And you get an autograph and everything? It's like Carol Monroe. Well, maybe she would be next. But uh, Michelle or Karen Valentine would be damned. I would go right there. I bet you Booger doesn't have as many people online as Alice Cooper does. Probably not. Yeah. But you know what? I'm a big fan of character actors. And yes. That's what that guy is. Uh, character, character actors, actor. they're the unsung heroes. They, they don't get are. the... the, uh, the Accolades. Yeah. Remember Struthers Martin? He's great. He's dead now. Awesome. Awesome character actor. He passed. What we have here is a total lack of whatever the fuck he said. Sprinkle some retro clips. A clip? What are you talking about? I gave you a folder of sound bites of from the original Chiller Theater days. Oh, really? In the early '90s, when when you and I uh, went and shopped the shows. I did not know that was it. You know, John, you play any clip you want from that folder. What Whoa, do you think about let's that? Let's see. All right. Okay. Here we go. Is that Johnny Legend? All right, I can almost sure. taste it, so let's not waste it. Now. Ooh, yeah. Hoo-ah, hoo-ah, hoo-ah. Beat. Harry Novak. Kitten oh, Nativity. Yep. Get, 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 Harry gave me this. Harry gave me this for free. Oh, you want a freebie? Yeah, because I'm stupid. I have no job. <laughs> well, let me give you something free. Cool. Yeah. Great. You put love? Yeah. Love and lust. Yeah. <laughs> You're great. I hope you enjoy that. <laughs> Thanks. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That was a oh clip from the 1993 Chiller Theater show that, was crazy. that John and I went to. John played a character called Crank, and this show was a half an hour TV show of Chiller that we cut together and aired in the tri-state area on cable. And I would tell, I can tell you, John, because I haven't seen that. Listen, I haven't heard that clip in a long time. Yeah, me neither. It's fucking nuts. It's pretty insane. <laughs> Without even seeing it, it sounds pretty uh, like whoa. Wow, and that was edited analog, tape to tape. Oh, my God. All those fucking sound effects. It took, it took hours and oh hours to do that one little God. clip. <laughs> now you could do it in like 10 minutes. Yeah. It took hours. So that was Kitten Natividad, and in the back had Johnny Legend and Harry Novak. Wow. Nuts. Oh, come on, you got another clip? Maybe the one yeah. not so is crazy. How about uh, David Prowse? Darth, Great. Darth Vader. Great. Hi, we're here with David Prowse, That's famous me. actor. Yeah. Also known as Darth Vader, all three Darth Vaders um, from the Star Wars collection. David, it's a it's a great honor to meet you okay, and okay. Uh, get a chance to talk with you. Why don't you tell a little bit about your career? I know we, you started off as a strong man, right? You said yeah, you did so, some theater. Well, I had um, I had a I was a bodybuilder to start with, and then I uh, and I did I did about oh, ten years bodybuilding before I, I I got invited to enter the Mr. Universe contest, and then I changed over from bodybuilding to weightlifting, and then I had three years um, as the British heavyweight weightlifting champion. Then I had a professional act. I used to call myself Britain's Strongest Man, uh-huh. and then eventually uh, I, I I got invited to go in for professional Highland Games. Now you said. Um, how did you get started in the film business? You, you know, you started uh, in theater. Well, you're not the very audience first job I ever had. Uh-huh. Was um, I was offered a part in a play, and uh, they they were looking for an, an actor who could lift up another actor off of a bed, and uh, they auditioned lots of actors for this role, and nobody could pick him up. And uh, he, he wasn't very big, but nobody could pick him up the way they wanted it done. And uh, they eventually um, got had the hit on the idea of getting getting the strong man in. And I, of course, at that time, I was I was Britain's strongest man. And uh, they said, what do you think you could do it? And I said, yeah, I could do it easily. And so they said, we'd like to see you. So I picked him up off the floor and said, well, you know, where would you like to? And, said, <laughs> and they said, oh, that's marvelous. You know, can you do that twice nightly? And I said, well, if you pay me enough money, I'll do it as many times a night as you like. And that got me my, that really, the big thing was, was not only did it get me the part in the play, but it also got me my union ticket and it got uh, me into the actor's union. Right. And that is the major move, you know, right. get, getting your union tickets. And then, uh, then I got offered my very first film, which was Casino Royale. Right. Mm-hmm. Never looked back from then on. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He was also in uh, Clockwork Orange. David Prowse, mo- mostly known as Darth Vader. 
Right. At the Chiller Theater, 1993. Yeah. Who knew? Yeah. So go. Let's go back to the Chiller web- website. Who okay. else is that? Who else is that Chiller this April? Uh, let's see. <laughs> the girl who played Blossom. <laughs> Mayim Bialik. I don't know what that means. Ooh, Turka Satana's there from Faster Pussycat. Kill, nice. kill, kill. She was the hot, uh, hot minx. Brunette with the straight cut. Mm. Nice. Who else? Connor Trenier. Never heard of him. <laughs> Short Trek Enterprise. Nice. <laughs> James Darren. What are you saying? This magic. I don't moment. know. It has TV work. It doesn't have his. Uh... James Darren, the singer. James, it looks like him, but I don't know. I Who can't else? Tell. Brooke McCarter from the Lost Boys. Which guy was he? I don't know. One of the guys that hung out with uh, Christopher who, Lee. The 24 guy. <laughs> oh, Kiefer Sutherland. Kiefer Sutherland. <laughs> Christopher Lee. Arch Hall Jr. Well, oh. guitar, Eeg. Nice. I don't know what that means. Who else? Ah, oh, Frankie Vincent from Frankie Good, A. Good Fellows and the Sopranos. Is that the shine box guy? Yeah, I'll go get your fucking shine box. <laughs> Told you I don't do that anymore. Frank Serrano from Dawn of the Dead. Okay. Or Sir Rayo. Nick, Ta- Nick Tallow, Dawn of the Dead. Seltzer Bottle Biker. Machete Zombie from Dawn of the Dead. Leonard Lies. I guess as you scroll down, the people get a little more. Deanna Enox. Ted Bowhaus. Ted Boas. Boas. You know Ted, right? Yeah. Yes, I do. Got another clip for us? Uh, I'm trying to look here. Tough Darts. Jim Morrison. Jim Morrison? <laughs> it's a band called Tough oh, Darts. Okay. With Tommy okay. Frenzy, John DeSalvo, and Jim Morrison. The Dead Elvi, of course. Yes. And uh, a ho- lots of people from horror movies. What you know, you... Oh, they got a couple of guys from um, the original Alice Cooper band. Yeah, who they got? And Alice Cooper's going to be there. That should be interesting. They're going to get into a fist fight? They're like, Alice, you motherfucker. (laughs) Okay, here's Gunnar Hansen. Nice. It's been very busy, a lot of people, and and the people really love the movie here. Does it surprise you that, you know, I mean, this came out years, years ago, and people still, uh, you know. We shot this 20 years ago this summer, and I really had no idea until I went out to L.A. six years ago to do Hooker's. Uh, and that's when I realized, because I went, I went to Maine and, you know, hit off in Maine uh, working as a writer. And I just paid no attention to the movie, you know, to, to the way the public was receiving the movie. And so it's still amazing to me how big the movie is and how, how much of a reaction I get when people, because a lot of people, of course, don't believe it. And then when they realize it really is me, that I am Leatherface, they're sort of awestruck and afraid to come over. Do you keep a mask with you to kind of prove it to them when they come by? No. I just, or a chainsaw? No, I just remind them that I have never lied to them, so. Ah. Well, thanks a lot for taking time to talk to us. It was a pleasure. We're looking forward to you uh, seeing you in uh, a num- Texas Chainsaw number four. Is there like a uh, subtitle to that? Or? No, I don't know. We, I haven't even seen the script yet. We're ah. still talking about it. So Texas Chainsaw Massacre number four, right. part four. It's we'll look forward to it. Want. It's as if two and three never happened. Ah. Okay. Great. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Wow. Who's that guy? That's our host, John. I don't remember that dude. <laughs> that was Glenn Takajian. I'm murdering his last name. It was Glenn. He was a friend of Frank T's. He had that announcer delivery down, and, huh? And uh, he like guest hosted one one of those oh. chiller things for us. The other was Paul Dorigo, right? Interviewing David Prowse, right? We just heard that was Leatherface. Leatherface. And that was Texas Chainsaw Four. I don't know how many they're up to now. Jesus they're Christ. back to the beginning now. I think. Is that really? Yeah, they start remaking. Gosh. What else you got? I got a cold. Harry Novak. Oh. Famous man you'll ever meet in your lifetime. Harry Novak is standing right over your shoulder. Hey, right. hey how you doing there, guys? How are you doing, Harry? How are okay. you doing? I produce a lot of these pictures. Let's go. Twisted sex. Like, what's that about? Oh, that's about everything you want to know about. <laughs> is there anything with feet in there? Everything. Feet? Feet. Do you know any of these girls anymore? Feet. Of course. They still look like that? They, well, their kids look like that. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. Hey. Mondo Bellardo. Nudie Cutie, the sickest, oh, yeah. seducer, face, a smell of, smell of the brine. Oh, All right, how about, please don't eat my mother. Ah, <laughs> no, stop the whore. I wish she got to my house before I ate my mother, because it's too late now. Oh, Wait. God. Bucky's Beaver, what's that all about? <laughs> I don't know. Hey, would you like to have a photo to take with? Yeah. There you go, let me autograph it for you. Does it cost money? No. Cool. Okay, okay. 
Right. What? What do you want me to write? Two crank. Two crank. Crank? Crank. Crank. C-R crank. You spelled all these right. Crank. Listen, I want to make sure I uh, get it in right. I understand, Harry. You like this one, too? I'll give you that one there, too. I yeah. Yeah? I, I got plenty of room in my bag. He was, I, a, he was a good sport. I have to tell you, John Fidelli, John Fidelli sitting right next to me, dressed up as Crank. That was crazy. Crazy, crazy Crank character walking around Chiller, interviewing people. Just attacking, assaulting yeah, people. and Harry, I mean, he really rolled with it. He sure did. So did Kitten, yeah. and so did Johnny Legend. Yeah. I mean, they really rolled with they it. They were all very cool. You know why? Because they have, like, carnival background. They, like, yeah. they're, they're performers. They're from the era. They, they can roll with it. Yeah. You know what I like that Harry said? He's like, I'll give you something to take with. Yes. That's from yes. that generation, that phrase. But uh, those are fun. Yeah. Those were really, really fun. Are, yeah, those, we, are those posted on YouTube? No, they? I really got to I gotta uh, encode them. Oh, jeez. Because they're on, what, three-quarter inch tape? I think that people would have a ball watching those. Yeah, you think? Oh, my God. That was fun. Yeah. What else you got? The HG intro. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, can I play that? Okay. With number two, right? I'm Herschel Gordon Lewis. And I'm Dave Friedman. And you are watching the Alternative Cinema Podcast. And how you are. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Well, you that see, was like fucking uh, <laughs> David, David Packer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tony Curtis. And I want to tell you about a fantastic filmmaker, David Packer. <laughs> it was like the ABC Saturday Night Movie, Charlton Heston. Tony Curtis, Damon Packard, <laughs> Sage Stallone. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get sound close to those. Oh, I gotta. that movie is insane. You promoted that movie on here, one didn't of, you? I don't know. One you of the, should. The, one of the best movies ever made on insane, planet Earth. Insane, insane movie. Is, uh, Reflections of Evil. Yes. Oh my God. The uncut version. Oh, good lord. Genius. Does, does he still give people the uncut version if they ask I for don't it? Know. Yeah, that was that shit was awesome. We would sit around and watch that as much oh as we could because it's just so intense. Damon Packard's Reflections of Evil. Oh my God! It's it's intense, isn't it? Like yeah. this, there's a scene. You... There's a scene where he's eating all those little chocolate uh, <laughs> liquor. Yeah, but the sound effects are pumped up to like fucking eleven. <laughs> so every time he's opening up a little a little tiny bottle, it's like <laughs> really fucking loud. And he's slurping it down, and then he vomits. And he falls on the ground, hits his head. <laughs> And like Cracks, blood bursts. <laughs> Did you, oh, we were here like, when we were playing Chad's wedding. That he oh edited. yeah, that's pretty crazy with the baby. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. very insane. Yeah, yeah, oh, he's he's a God. crazy dude, man. Some funny shit in that. Ooh, got another clip. What do you got? Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> HG MSP intro. Nope. I got this. Got it. <laughs> Uh, how about uh, Monique Gabrielle? Hi. Hello. I'm Craig. Hi. Can I shake your hand? Sure. Thanks. What's your name? I'm Monique Gabriel. Gabriel? Are you related to Peter? <laughs> Do another one. Do you do? Do you do any cars like a '57 Chevy? No. Oh. This is Movie Land, where everything's. What the hell is she talking about? That was Monique Gabrielle. She's insane. She, she was she a blonde? I forget. Yeah, blonde, very buxom. Yes. She did animal like noises. Yeah, she noises. did. I mean, she was serious about it. She was it. doing monkeys and cats and shit. She was in like a early '90s, like late night TV, USA Network, Swamp, the Return of oh, Swamp right, thing, right, right. things like that. Yeah. Uh, so. Who's uh, Lewis Friedman? Oh, that's H. G. Lewis and David Friedman. This is the first time. They got back together in 1993 at the Chiller Convention. Really? Yeah. Okay. Before there was Jason, before there was there was Freddie, there was Blood Feast, there was Herschel Gordon Lewis in person and Dave Friedman, two of the godfathers of gore. 
These are the guys who started it well before uh, any of the... Look what we did. Look, look, look what you did. How does it feel to be a, uh, a hero, an inspiration to a lot of the people who were here? Cult figure? The only problem is that most cult figures are dead. Ah. This really is stupefying to me, to see this all these years later, people who weren't even alive when we made these things. And look what we have been the progenitors of. It, it's very impressive. Very I mean, what have we wrought? <laughs> Indeed. The funny thing is, Blood Feast was 10 years ahead of Night of the Living Dead, 10 years ahead of uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, a good 15, 20 years ahead of Friday the 13th, the Jasons, the Freddies, uh, the Michael Myers, and the rest of them. And it was not the greatest film ever made, but it has no, stood the, the second greatest film ever made. <laughs> but it has stood the test of time. And I think of people like Herschel, I certainly I speak for myself on this, but I think it's kind of gratifying to know that people still remember that picture. Absolutely. Yes. A lot of the, I mean a lot of the people here are, are here because of the influence that you you know gentlemen have had on them. Are, we is, apologize for corrupting <laughs> yes, public yes. taste. That's right. A lot of parents have a lot to say about the, about that, I'm sure. Well the parents are here too. That's true. Actually, these films differ from some of the latter-day adaptations in that they were good-natured, they were camp, they were tongue-in-cheek. Nothing that we did was, that we didn't take it seriously, the people who went to see them didn't take them seriously. We didn't take ourselves seriously, and unfortunately, I think a lot of the young, quote, filmmakers, unquote, today, are taking themselves very, very seriously. We didn't have this auteur complex that uh, seems to be prevalent we today. Fun. We had a good time. We are you, fun. are you, gentlemen? I mean, a lot of the fans want to know. Are you, gentlemen, going to be, you know, bringing us anything in the near future? We are in constant conversation, but that's as far as it's gone so far. We have two scripts which have been sitting, frothing. One is called Herschel Gordon Lewis's Grim Fairy Tales, and the other is called. As, in keeping with the times, Blood Beast 2. Ah, the long-awaited sequel. The long -awaited, it may be much longer. 30, 30 years. <laughs> well, who, who can all the fans write to to get this, you know, can we, can we start a campaign to get these uh, movies happening? Well, I would start with Bill Clinton and work my way down from there. <laughs> uh, oh, I got this guy. What's up, Daddy? <laughs> I remember him. You don't have the Schmala guy on here, though. Ah, uh, no, I don't. What's this? <laughs> Zachary. Oh, Zachary laughing. <laughs> that's the original. Yeah. Uh, that's about it. That's it? Tony Rabinoff. Oh, well, Rabinoff. Play, that. play that. Who's he? Toby Radloff, the genuine killer nerd from Cleveland, Ohio. American Here in Splendor? Hansack, New Jersey at the Chiller Theater Convention, selling my two movies, Killer Nerd and Bride a Killer Nerd. So, how does Hackensack compare to Cleveland? Um, it's typical suburb. Just a typical suburb. Yeah. The nerds fit in here? Very much so. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit. Uh, we, we have our two films out here on videotape. Is there going to be a third in the uh, collection of uh, killer nerd films? Eventually there will be a movie called Zombie Nerd, but we got to sell a lot of killer nerds and ride of killer nerds first. Uh, so we you got to raise the cash to uh, finance the third film. So if you kids want to see another killer nerd film, we're going to have to start buying some of these. I'll take two. Sure. Hey. I still got this dream that some big shot from Hollywood will see these and want to cast me in one of his films. Kind of a, another next Stallone kind of Rambo type of character? Possibly. Who knows? Maybe Paramount Pictures is looking for me. Who knows? Somebody's looking for you, I'm sure. Right, yeah. And we're not sure who it is, but when they find you, we'll... Uh... I don't care if it's Paramount or Universal or Warner Brothers or Fox or Columbia, as long as it's just a big shot. A big shot. Right. Well, there may be some big shots walking around here. We'll send them your way. Right. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Wow. I didn't know we. Uh, you see American Splendor? Too. No. <sighs> Not American Splendor. American movie. No. American Splendor. With uh, about. Um, about the cartoonist. Yeah. What's his name? Uh, Crum. No. Crum was in it. Oh really? Character, an actor playing Crumb was in it, but it's not about Crumb. Oh Crum. right, Harvey right. Harvey, the guy who worked in the like. Uh, Come on. Is he Har worked in the uh, like the the records department with at the Toby at the VA. Radloff. Yes. Really? Not a V. Oh, not. I remember that guy. Yeah, sure. He wore his pants up to here and shit. That was Judah Freelander playing this guy. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh no shit. So he did get to Hollywood, except it wasn't him. Right. It was someone playing him, right. which is just as good, I guess, right? Yeah, sure. Oh, you know who else is going to be a chiller? Darian Kane. Yes. And Deanna Demko. Really? Yes. She screams. Remember, she would always scream? 
Yes. Like like your like your your glasses would just break yeah, on your face. Like, Why? Tell me, John. Yeah. When is Chiller? It is April sixteenth through the eighteenth. Is that right? Yes. Friday. From six to eleven. Saturday from eleven a.m. to seven p.m. And with the big monster jam at night. Yes. With the dead Elvi and Zachary, I'm sure. He's still going strong. Jeez. Yes, yeah, Zachary. How old is that dude? I believe he's ninety. Holy fuck. God bless. Yes, God bless. Very nice man. And then Sunday is um, 11 a.m. till 5 p.m. We saw Zachary at the Michael Thomas Memorial. Memorial. Yeah, we did. I didn't. I didn't know that was him. He was just so quiet. He had um, a very nice suit on. I never saw him without makeup on. I did oh. not fucking recognize him. And he wasn't so laughing. I felt so bad. He wasn't like doing his. Nope. <laughs> he, he seemed genuinely sad. I, I think him, him and Mike Thomas were, you know, yeah. pretty tight. It was. It was a bummer, man. Yeah, a real bummer. But uh, maybe we'll get to see Christine there. Yeah. In the uh, Spider Babe, Lord of the G-String, Gladiator Eroticus, Playmate of the Apes, DVD collection that's coming out. Yeah. There is a, uh, a write-up on Mike Thomas in the liner notes. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, he was uh, he was a well-respected professional. Started out on the first seasons of SNL as a makeup artist. Yeah. And oddly enough, right after we had that memorial, I was watching TV and there was an old... Believe it or not, episode on yes. featuring Michael. He used to paint women up as animals. Yes. And I saw it. I'm like, holy fuck. Him and Christine. Yeah. Painting people up. Like a zebra or a giraffe well, Christine or a lion. Did it, do you remember for uh, the Swedish Wildcat supplemental? Mm hmm. Remember? Oh, yeah. She, was she, 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 she Mike wasn't up. available that day. She came out and she painted, did a great job. painted all the girls up as animals. Hey, yeah. man, check this out. Ladies and gentlemen. This picture, truly one of the most unusual ever filmed, contains scenes which under no circumstances should be viewed by anyone with a heart condition or anyone who is easily upset. We urgently recommend that if you are such a person or the parent of a young or impressionable child now in attendance, that you and the child leave the auditorium. The fantastic duel of the century, the most ferocious battle in history. The flesh and blood King Kong fights his most incredible enemy, a 60-foot robot King Kong forged of super steel. King Kong escapes. All new, all thrilling in Technicolor. King Kong battles missiles, monsters, and a King Kong of steel. King Kong escapes. A Toho Company limited picture, a universal release. Girls and corpses. <laughs> Wow. That's the spring That's issue. perfect combination. That's the spring issue of Girls and Corpses magazine. I think, John, you should turn to... <laughs> Springtime for Hitler yeah. issue? You should turn to uh, page t- uh, 20. Page 20. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you must be in this. <clears throat> oh, Aaron Ross. Ross. Uh, Ross. And Bill Hellfire. And what does it say? Though? What's the caption say? There's photos by oh Mike Grasso. That's right. Photography by Mike Grasso. Do you know this is the where did you take these photos? Well, these photos were obviously here. Where where's the graveyard? The graveyard is in North Jersey. She looks great. She looks terrific, huh? Nicely done. Nicely done. I can tell you that this is like Lolita. Yes. I see. I know I'm really stuck on the photography nerdisms, but this is the I, I I am willing to bet this is the only published magazine in the world to have photos published from Kodachrome film stock. Yeah, I bet you're right. Right? Now, did you retouch any of these photos? I did very, very little retouching. I don't do any retouching. I I scan them. I bring them into Photoshop. I make sure the exposures, you know, the black levels and the white levels are correct. Right. And that's it. Everything else was done in camera, as they say. That's great. Thank you. That's Girls and Corpses magazine, the spring issue, which is out now. How long has this thing been going on? That's been going on for quite a while, from really? what I hear, like you know, a few years. And I have to tell you, John, I was really as surprised as you to hear of such a thing. Girls and corpses, it's like a corpse of Hitler <laughs> that this girl is posing with. What, why is it I could see like you? It's so fucking funny. Why is it I could see you and the smooth sailor guys like cracking up, like oh, just it's seeing that? Insane. I would love to. Oh, dude, you got to get me a copy. Really? Oh, yeah, this will be a big hit. Really? Yeah, look at this girl. She's like pushing her boobs up to this fucking <laughs> dead Hitler with the mustache and the hair. 
in an SS uniform. It's crazy. I had no idea that he get a, re- a reaction like that. That's would, pretty funny. Would you say this is geared up towards a Howard Stern it's type fan? Kyle with a smile. <laughs> <laughs> the Fraulein and the Fuhrer. That's oh, pretty, pretty funny. funny. Well, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Because I'm sort of like... From the perspective of girls and corpses, I'm a little creatively bankrupt. I would like to shoot more for them. Can you come up with shoot something like that? Can you come up with a scenario? Like I did it already. I did the girl. Yeah, like what what other girls and corpses combo could be shot that would be interesting? How about like this is something you could do. (laughs) You could shoot like girls that you know how how people report that they have sex with uh, uh, ghosts. Yes, you could do something along those lines. What sex with a corpse? Sex with a ghost that's like a corpse. Well, a ghost is not. A I'm corpse. just off the top of my head. Oh, well, you it could be about. a ghost corpse. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> or you could do like a, a necromantic. Kind Are of there thing. any famous people in history, like Hitler types, that can be <laughs> Exploited? dug up? Exploited? Yes. Hmm. I'll have to think about yeah, that, but that would be good. That would be good. That would be really funny. Maybe I should do like the Marilyn Monroe. No, well, I guess. A lesbian type thing? Yeah, it could be. How about for like... Uh... How about JFK? <laughs> no. no. Too soon? Hey, you're Alan Poe. Uh, now you're talking. Yeah. Yeah, you need evil characters like Mussolini. Yep. But no one's going to get that. It's too It's too sublime. Sublime. <laughs> it's too... Uh... Subtle? Thank you. Sublime. It's too subtle. <laughs> Mussolini. I mean, Hitler's the guy. Or, uh, yeah, Hitler's the guy. Yeah, he's the guy. He personifies evil. Yeah. If you're going to dig somebody up and, like, press your boobs up against his head, it's got to be Hitler. Absolutely. Great idea. Well, John, I, you know, I think that's all I got. Okay. Wow. Well, I think, uh... That's... Well, thanks, everybody. What else for, can you say? For tuning in. And, uh, if you, uh, if you're in the tri-state area, or not, go to the Chiller Theater, uh... Chiller Theater Model and Toy Expo. Yeah, go to the Chiller Theater. You'll have a blast. Yeah, there's a lot to look at. And I'm gonna be there, I'm gonna be there... Walking around. With a track man. Yeah. Who's flying in from, uh, Florida. Chiller Theater Toy Model and Film Expo. Yep. Yeah, I'd like to meet, uh, Booger. Yeah. I'm gonna meet Booger. So, we're gonna see everybody next month. Yeah. Alternative Cinema Podcast at gmail.com. Good night and good bless. Bye.